Hello everyone, this is Mike Taylor. I'm an SAP Business One consultant. I am happy that everybody is enjoying my videos. Thank you so much for subscribing. I'm almost at 200 subscribers, that's amazing. I call you my sapiens, S-A-P, sapiens, like homo sapiens, so that's awesome. Thank you so much for all the comments and questions. I try to help you as much as I can. I do the best that I can. I cannot monetize my videos. If you would not mind going to supportme.battleshipcobra.com, it would be fantastic. If you had Bitcoin, send me a couple bits. It doesn't have to be a lot. Send me 25 cents, whatever you got. <clears throat> It really creates incentive for me to keep doing these. I want to help you guys. I want to help everybody. I'll continue to make periodic videos, but if I get any sort of support, I will continue with more frequent uploads. So today I'm just experimenting with this live stream thing. With live streaming, I, uh, I want to reduce my editing time and just do videos straight from me to you. They'll be a little bit less produced, but um, I still have kind of a you know an agenda for this so having said that let's get going okay so I wanted to talk today about user defined fields and valid values lists uh, most people will just do a static values list for the UDFs I'm uh, and just BTW I am uh, I'm not really gonna slow down and not really gonna explain much if you don't know anything about UDFs this is maybe a slightly more advanced topic for consultants so I, my niche is SAP Business One. Um, you know, I don't really do too much basic stuff. This is mostly for consultants. So I'm going to use all the jargon and uh, TLAs that I can. Please subscribe if you're an SAP Business One consultant. I do lots of videos and I have lots of other videos there, but I'm going to try and just do SAP videos. That's my niche. So <clears throat> having said that, I'm going to assume you're familiar with UDFs. And valid values list. So if you've ever done a if you've ever done a UDF and you've done a valid values list, that's like a drop down list. With the drop down list, you can set a static type of value. So let's go, tools, customization tools, user defined fields. I'm going to add to the marketing document in the title a UDF called example. <clears throat> I'm just going to call it example. I'm going to do a valid values list, and this is what I'm talking about. These uh, static values and um, this is one way that you would do it and uh, this is hard coded but the thing about this is it's not flexible for anybody that wants to change or do anything you actually have to back up the database kick everybody off switch these values it's kind of a pain and somebody that's not familiar with backing up the database it really prevents them from doing anything <clears throat> it's also difficult to get these options out to a query without hard coding them. Say you had a hundred values, you don't want to do a case statement for every single one. So I'm going to show you a solution for getting the valid values out of a query and I'm also going to show you how to make a user-defined object and user-defined table in order to make <clears throat> an option in the sidebar where you can just set where the users can set the options and um, so you can be kind of hands-off and you can let you can let the customer <clears throat> or if you are a customer you can let other users make and change the options list as they need without having to do any sort of database manipulation. So in this case I do value 1, option 1, value 2, option 2 and then I always like to leave a third one which is just a placeholder and with the description I leave it blank because a lot of people want to end up setting it blank and um, you know if they accidentally set it to 1 and then they want to set it to blank um, they need to have that option. So I've added this. So the thing about it is if you look at this example, I'm going to go to your sales order here, go to the last one. Example, so now I can see option one, option two, or I want to set it back to blank. So this is okay if you're planning on just, again, hard coding it and doing something like that where you are actually just having a few options. <clears throat> Even with a few options, if the customer wants to pivot and do something, you don't want to have to set a reminder for yourself, come back in the evening, back up the database and do stuff offline. Like, why not just let them do it? So I'll talk about this and how you get this this out in case of doing, um, you know, a specific query. So let's go to SQL Management Studios. So the table you want is a UFD1. That's where it stores these valid values here. You, so you can see because it's a 
<clears throat> a marketing document, it puts it in every single one of these tables. So you have option one, option two. So I'm just going to do it for the order, for the order header table. So you can see here, it stores all the values here and the descriptions. So if you wanted to get option one, option two, and then the null, um, what you have to do is actually link this description onto that particular field. So I've already written this little query here. So you can see now, you can see it's got the doc number thing and the example, so it's annoying. You have to interjoin the UFD1, <clears throat> example equals field value, and you can kind of decipher that from here. So field value, table ID is ORDR, and field value is one. You know, there's probably more efficient ways to do it. I don't like to do this, but this is to avoid a case statement where you can say, if example equals one, then option one, if example equals two, then option two, else blank. Um, so that's what I would do there. And <clears throat> again, that's one way to do it. Ooh, I got some coffee here, just hold on a sec. Coffee. <clears throat> it's about 5 p.m. here, it's a little late to have a coffee, so I didn't get a very big one. Okay, so that's one way to do it. So. If you have to do valid values or you already have existing valid values, use the UFD, UFD1 table and uh, link it up and it'll still work the same. But the bottom line is if you want to add option three, you have to go tools, customization tools, user defined fields, update, add a new option three, option three and then bump that up there. You have to update this. And again, this is going to kick everybody off. <clears throat> Super annoying. OK, here, go to the end, da, 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 option one, two, three. So again, that, that's one way to do it, not the best practice way to do it. So a second way to do it is to add your own user-defined table. So I'm going to say, <clears throat> let's go uh, test table examples. And in this case, I'm going to make it a user-defined object, so I want it to be a master data type. You can look up the different types, but in this case of doing a drop-down, just to be very simple, I'm just going to make the simplest possible example here as a master data. So just define your table, push example, select master data. If you don't, if you select no object, you won't be able to do a user-defined object. Okay, so I'm going to make that, make this once. <clears throat> I can go into that table. Oh, actually, I can't. I have to add it as user of an object. I forgot. So we go to customization tools, object Reser registration wizard. Next, add a new object. So we're going to go test table. You type whatever you want. So this is examples. It's a master data type, and you should see just the one you did as master data. So remember, you set it as master data. Next. I usually allow delete. I don't think you need find in the way that I'm going to set it up, but there's a lot of different options with this so you can play around. So I'm just going to set it up as a matrix type. And I'll show you what a matrix type is. So now you can make your own form with nothing. This is not SDK. This is totally out of the box. I think it's after uh, 9.1. So if you're before 9.1, I don't believe you can do this without SDK. I don't know. Don't quote me, but I, I don't like to work with older versions anyways. you got to have to upgrade. Upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. So default form. I don't want a header line style. You could do a master data header type and then a master data um, row type, and you can link them together in some really interesting things. But in this case, I'm just going to do a matrix style, which is like a little spreadsheet. Menu items. <clears throat> Menu caption is examples for a live stream. Parent menu ID. I'm just going to put this somewhere in administration. I'm just going to do it in general. Place it at the bottom, click Next. You want the code and the name. You can add UDFs and all sorts of other things to this too. I just want this for the parent type. I don't have any linked child user tables, but you can. You don't need this. I could basically just push Finish. So I'm going to push Finish. So now what you can do is jump into General Users, and you see examples from live stream. So now I can set this just as a user. So I go 1, Option 1. <clears throat> Oops. Two, option two, three, option.
function three. And I don't need, to, in this case, to do any sort of backups or anything like that. I can do it straight out of the bar. Any user can do it, and I believe it adds an authorization matrix in there too. So you can set specific users to be authorized. Customization tools, now you want to add a UDF that references that particular oh, marketing data. I wonder if I can just switch it. Probably not. Okay, so I'm going to add a new <clears throat> add a new UDF, valid values, link to entities, uh, link to table, test table. It's funny because the link to UDO doesn't do it. It's the link to tables. Uh, I think maybe the UDO is still, I, I, I don't know. I can't tell you exactly, but set link table table items, which is what I just did. Wait, sorry, test table. Test table, which is what I just did. Let's go check it out. So you just have to do this one time with this UDF. Let's go back to our sales order. Example UDO. So now you have all these options here, including a nice clean blank one. And the thing about this, it's a little bit different, is you can pull this right from the tables in the query we should have our test tables here and then so we can just link ORDR I think it will go direct from here and you can just click and hold now in a very quick fashion I can do the same thing name let's do an update here switch back to this declare scalar variable well join test table I don't know if this needs to be DBO well I should have tested this before live stream huh there we go okay so um, you have to define database object I guess because this is uh, mimicking a variable, it doesn't like it. So, a little pro tip there. So, it will do it. It'll inner join it. Remember your inner joins and your outer joins. Make sure you know the difference. So, you can see here very quickly, I've done option three, option three. Now, if I switch this obviously to option two, I've done this. So, extremely in an extremely quick fashion I can just jump back in here say they want to add something else examples for live stream five option five doesn't kick anybody out close your sales order there go back option five and without any sort of uh, no fuss no muss everything is is done so that's my best practice way of doing a UDF ad to avoid the valid values issue um, again hopefully you enjoyed this this is just a really quick one in my series of of uh, my, my query series if you have any particular topic you want me to cover just leave a comment in the message box below or a comment below and don't forget to go to supportme.battleshipcobra.com and uh, have a great day don't forget to subscribe you guys are awesome bye for now